Joined by Mark Bailey from Fig Securities. And, and who would be this guy, Mark? I mean, how... <sighs> What do you say? You just go in there and try and pretend like everything is fine at home, everyone's on the same page at home, and really it's just a complete state of flux? Yeah, good morning, James. I think that's exactly what David Davis has to do. He has to kind of go in there and, you know, almost project a united front. But again, you know, there's calls in the, in the UK press over the weekend that maybe Theresa May only has 10 days to turn mm. around her, her premiership, uh, prime ministership, sorry. And, you know, the handling of the uh, tower uh, fire at, in Grenfell Towers. Uh, she hasn't done particularly well there. So there's, there's talk that maybe there's some kind of a stalking horse um, from the soft Brexit camp. Uh, again, you know, again, doesn't help that united front. But, you know, the, the negotiations start today. Um, strangely, though, if you look at the price action on sterling, given the kind of almost surprise election result and the strength of Labour, you've actually seen sterling uh, versus the, the euro at, the, in terms of the volatility, at the lowest levels um, so far this month and the, the amount of movement since 2014, which is you know, probably slightly perverse given the, the shocks that we've seen over the, uh, over the last few weeks. But in terms of the currency market's positioning on sterling, it's the most bearish out of the G10 currencies. If you're looking at the option uh, traded uh, baskets and looking at the, how the pricing is there. So the market is certainly expecting to see sterling coming out weaker. And I think part of that is due to the fact that you're seeing a weakness in terms of their position, bargaining position on, on the Brexit, and who knows how that's going to uh, uh, go forward. You know, they've got to try and secure the rights of the UK citizens in Europe and vice versa, the EU nationals in the UK. And also they've got that tricky problem of the, the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic. Um, so those are the key issues that they will want to try to resolve uh, first. But, you know, I'm sure the, on the other side, the EU is going to want to hit them with the, the exit bill, uh, which we've seen that you could, could be up to, you know, 80 billion euros, which is, you know, way too much than uh, the UK government is prepared to pay. And they've kind of said ballpark, you know, between one and five billion as, as a fair, fair price to pay to leave. So it's all up for negotiations. That, those negotiations kick off today uh, in Brussels um, with David Davis heading over there. But, you know, it's going to be a very difficult uh, mm. two-year two conversation. Uh, yeah, just looking forward, I mean, you mentioned their low volatility, which is um, fairly surprising, um, but those currency moves, I mean, given now that these negotiations are getting underway, do you think, uh, you know, a bit of angst will sort of ramp up, a bit of volatility, uncertainty around that region? I think so, and I think you know the kind of the, the markets will hinge slightly on some of the rumours and some of the deals or you know, in the, the positioning that d does take place. So I've seen a lot of talk in the uh, in the in the financial markets. It's more about the tone of the negotiations, and if the tone is constructive, um, then you know, I think that will help to dampen uh, you know, currency volatility. But I think you know there's always a chance, and I think it's an increased chance that. You know, Britain will leave the European Union without a deal. I think that mm. probability has increased significantly since the general election, since uh, kind of Labour's strength in the polls. Um, and, you know, they've still got to cement that, uh, I guess, agreement with the, uh, uh, the um, I I Irish party, the DUP, in terms of what that they actually need to do to get those guys on board. And again, it's still a pretty much a wafer-thin majority in any case. So. I think you're going to see weakness in sterling over the next uh, th three to six months, and then potentially you may see a bit of strengthening as, uh, as everybody's position for that uh, starts to reverse out. How do you think the BOE, Mark Carney-led BOE, view it all? I mean, we saw just last week a surprising amount of members actually vote in favour of a hike, far above what the market had expected. I mean, could you imagine a situation where you're seeing hikes with all of this Brexit uncertainty around UK floating about? Yeah, look, the, the, the Bank of England meeting last week and the 5-3 split in terms of, uh, you know, 5 for hold, 3 for hikes was considerably higher than the market expected in terms of favour for hikes. I think one of those is is leaving the uh, MPC next month, so, so she will drop out of the voting. One is a, a renowned hawk and the other one was probably a bit of surprise. So it probably actually wasn't as hawkish as initial reads uh, would indicate. But having said that, you know, I, I still think it's, it's remarkable that the Bank of England has almost kind of it seemed to ignore all the election results, mm. uh, which was a surprise, and also the chance of volatility coming through in terms of the, um, the Brexit negotiations. 
On the flip side, though, we have seen you know, higher um, inflation coming through, whether it's in the CPI prices or the RPI prices. They both surprise on the, on the upside. So again, that's something that the, the Bank of England has to be aware of. But I, th I struggle still to believe that you're going to see the Bank of England hiking mm -hmm. uh, rates, given the amount of uncertainty that's still surrounding the UK economy, even if you do see inflation starting to pick up and run, run, th run through. But a lot of that is driven by the fall that you've seen over the last uh, six months to a year in sterling, imported inflation and maybe once that works, works its way through the system, you're still not seeing any kind of wage inflation coming through in the UK as you're not here or in the States. So that will give the Bank of England a bit of breathing space so to, to potentially look through any kind of temporary spikes in, uh, in inflation. Mark, can we just extend the conversation beyond... Points decline. Jessica Russett live at Fig. Warm welcome into the show. And putting this one into context now, so all about the data from here on in and just looking at those home figures, uh, the starts at an eight month low, it's problematic, is it not? And the market's expressing that to a measure. Good afternoon, Carson. Thanks for having me. That's right. This is another example of some weaker data coming through out of the US. Uh, they were expecting uh, one. Point, one point. 0.22 mil uh, annual with those house starts that came in at 1.09 mil uh, and so that is a drop of 5.5% as you did mention there which is the an eight month low so uh, what we have seen is yields um, drop lower on the back of that uh, we've got the 10 year currently at 2.15% and the highest it's actually been this year has been at 2.63% so it's come off quite significantly and this is after uh, there have been you know uh, four rate hikes um, so it's quite uh, it's quite interesting to see. Mm. Domestically, uh, news out on the sovereigns uh, exercise on it, uh, selling now 400 just 400 mil uh, the 2037 bonds. What a 375 uh, level here. What do we make of this? Uh, you know th this this uptake, like the uptake. Uh, yeah, uh, the, um, we have had we had um, some issuance last week on the three-year, uh, there was 10-year and also 30-year as well. And it has been met with um, muted demand. Mm -hmm. uh, we, our yields here have actually been holding quite steady. Uh, they've been trading around the, um, for the 10-year mm -hmm. in particular, it's been trading around the um, 2.39 uh, to 2.41% and it's currently at 2.4%. So it's been trading quite a tra uh, quite range, mm -hmm. quite a tight range. Uh, and we are seeing that with this um, new um, issuance as well coming through mm -hmm. from um, Australian government yields as well, uh, that they've been the same. Jessica, we must make a move, but thank you as always. Good to get an update. Jessica Russell live Thanks, at Fig. We'll take our own...